Hi, welcome to Read Gap. We've got another book cuddle guest. Melissa is a educational therapist. I'm really excited with, for her to share about what she does with us today. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Melissa and uh, I am an educational therapist in San Francisco. Um, and that looks different for lots of people, but in my case, what it means is that I work one-on-one -on -one with kids or in small groups um, with kids who learn differently or who are trying to build social skills. Um, I work with their families and I also advise uh, graduate student teachers um, throughout the year too. Excellent. So, so you're at a university then? Uh, yes, I work, um, that part of my practice, I work with the Bay Area Teacher Training Institute, which is at Holy Names University. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so it sounds a little familiar for me. I do, um, I have CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy that my son does. Is it similar to that at all? Or what's what explain what educational therapy is? Good question. Um, there's definitely overlaps with, um, sorry, I have a truck in the background. Um, definitely overlaps with other kinds of therapy also. Um, educational therapy looks at where learning difficulties and emotion intersect. So um, instead of tutoring kids on academic content, we're working on kind of reteaching their brains how to learn. Oh, excellent. That, that is fascinating. I, I would love to learn more about that, actually. This is, this is a really great topic for me. I've got um, an autistic and one that we think has ADHD and one has a lot of anxiety. And so I think so many parents could find this applicable in different ways of what great skills are you. Do you have an online presence as well of where people can find you online? I do. I, um, I keep my website and blog at www.cognitionsf.com um, and I'm in a couple other places on the internet. I guest blog uh, intermittently for Scary Mommy. Um, that's been the main place recently uh, that my writing has been going out. Uh, and I write curriculum for a company called Beable. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so what if um, some of the first content that I were to encounter on yours, tell me maybe the name of an article that is well, really well received or something like that. Um, one that was really well received that then actually Scary Mommy picked up and it got a, a bigger audience um, was one that was called Dude, That Sucks. Um, and it, it, Great title. It, <laughs> Thank you. Um, it came from an interaction that I had with some third graders um, mm -hmm. where one of them was kind of talking about how upset he was. And it wasn't a, something that we would find a huge deal. It was he didn't have dessert in his lunch. Um, and he was turning to his friend and like he was genuinely upset about it. He was right. looking for some kind of comfort. And his friend just kind of said, I never have lunch, so what? I mean, I never have dessert in my lunch, so what? Right. And the two of them kind of looked at me, and I pulled the friend aside. And I said, say, just say, dude, that sucks. Look him in his eye and say, dude, that sucks. I said, why? I said, just do it. And he went over and he said, dude, that sucks. And his friend went, I know, thank you. Thank you, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> All he wanted was that validation. And so what I, I wanted to write about in that article um, was that a lot of times that's what kids are looking for. They're not necessarily looking for a solution. They're just looking for someone to acknowledge, yes, this sucks. You are valid in feeling that way. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a really great moment. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I definitely want to go look up that article. I. I feel like I, I attempt to do that because I'll often, two kids in particular of mine are, the world is falling apart. And often the phrase is, this is the worst day ever. And I'm like, there are a lot of those in your life. My goodness, my son. And so a lot of times I'll say, oh, you know, I'm really sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry that you're going through this, such a hard thing. And I'll, I'll say these things, but they're not sincere. I'm as I'm hearing you say, like having the kid go say, dude, that sucks. What the kid was like, thank you. Like it 
I needed somebody to tell me that. I, I think in my telling my kids, I'm sorry that you're experiencing that. I need to figure out more of a connection kind of way to like let them feel that, yeah, that sucks and I'm sorry. So. I, th I think the way you're saying it is awesome. You're, <laughs> you're, you're not saying, yes, I agree. This is objectively the worst day of your life because right. it's probably not. Um, but you're acknowledging that that feeling is happening. Well, good. That's I, I try to acknowledge my kids because I, I think validating feelings is an important thing. So, totally. Yeah, sure. All right. So, Melissa, you obviously work with kids a lot. Do you, do you have your own kids? I do. I have a seven-year-old. A seven-year-old. Yes. So fun. Um, I have seven a eight-year-old. They are ask. <laughs> a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. Yes. So much fun. <laughs> he's he's my one that says that a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking of. So tell me, in your reaction, you've probably encountered books or when you were a kid. What is one of your favorite children's books? Because that's what we're here is to recommend children's books for adults to share with the kids in their lives. Awesome. Um, I so I am a huge reader, and I had such a hard time just picking one. I um, love when people say that because there's so it's a good thing. There's so many good ones out there. There's so many and so many more than when I was a kid. I mean, just the quality of children and young adult literature has skyrocketed. Right. Um, and just the number of things that are available for kids. Yeah. Um, so I brought one that didn't exist when I was a kid, but I have used it with so many classrooms. I love that that's the title. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that this is exactly what you're just saying um so the um the komochis are a social emotional learning um curriculum and series that i've used with kids for it feels like a thousand years um and they have picture books they have stuffed animals and they have an entire um curriculum for teachers and for parents to use um and what I really love about them is that they acknowledge a lot of feelings that are really normal for all humans, kid or, or adult. And it separates the way that you feel from the way that you behave. Very good. That's an important distinction. Awesome. Um, I'll, I'll give an example in a moment. Um, but they, through these sayings, which they call kotazawas, um, they introduce that you can have conflicting feelings, mm -hmm. that some feelings are kind of mixed, and mm -hmm. that you can feel one way but behave another way. Um, so maybe it would help to give an example from the book. Yeah, um, that's great. Uh, it's about a character named Cloud. He has big, big feelings. And when he gets upset about something, especially when it builds up and builds up and builds up, he reigns all over everyone's parade like he just bursts and it and it touches everyone around him he yes. just can't help it um and through the book his friends are able to say to him it's okay to be mad it's not okay to be mean you yeah. can be mad without being mean um and they they honor that he's having these big feelings but when he is able to stop from letting them rain on everyone else's day, they're able to come and help him have a good day. Very nice. So the best worst, the combined. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I love it. I think even young children have extremely complex emotions um, and to hear it named and said, that's okay. Like it's right. okay to feel more than one way. It's okay to feel lousy and still treat people nicely. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to make a mistake and then redo. Yes. Yes. I am really excited about that book. It's going to like be one of the next books I buy because on Sundays, one thing that we're trying to do is help my kids with um, their emotional, their emotional health, which has been a struggle for various reasons for some of them. And um, we've been using these fill links and these different things to, um, that are tools for them. But I love that that's a, a book, just a picture book, right? That it's yes. something you can read for enjoyment. I love that. It is. And then when they're, 
these adorable stuffed animals of the characters and you think, great, it's a merchandising tie-in. Um, but the really cool thing is that they, they come with these pouches in the animals uh -huh. and then get these little stuffed emotions. And you put, as you're going and talking about how the characters are feeling or how kids might right. be feeling, you put the emotions into the characters. We talk about how um, your feeling isn't you. It's right. something that comes in and out of you. It doesn't stay forever. Um, it, it's like a your brain is the big pond and yes. your feelings are all the little fish, but yeah, you're not right. all the little fish. You're the container yes. that holds them and they might swim in and out, um, but it's still you, you're still there. That is brilliant. I, I really love that. I'm excited about that. I, I can't believe how perfect that is for what I'm needing right now. It's like, um, this was planned. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, it was perfect. Well, thank you so much. And I will put in the description below the video here how they can find you, Melissa, on your um, blog and your website. And so um, people can reach out to you. And so thank you for being a guest. And we'll talk to you another time. Thank you so much. Bye.